Chapter 8, How to Make a Human. Not all the dinosaurs died. Crocodiles, lizards and snakes have survived teeth intact, and so have flying dinosaurs, which will become birds. While you are a soft little thing, very like a mouse and still tasty, a coating of fur is not going to stop one of them crunching you up. What are you going to do now? As you sat very still, hidden by a tree root, you could hear the big hungry lizard on your left, clumping around, looking for you. You could see the tasty dragonfly on your right, landing on a nearby flower. What to do? Your new secret weapon was your brain. It gave you a mental map of the area around you. You needn't move a whisker. If you kept still, nobody would notice you were there. Your brain silently worked out a plan. Knowing how fast the big hungry lizard could move, plus how big it was, minus its speed chasing you through a tangle of roots, multiplied by how very quick the dragonfly was, divided by how very close it had just landed, you calculated what to do. Your brain could foresee the future. Suddenly, you jumped out, caught the dragonfly in your jaws and scurried down below the tree root with it, leaving Big Hungry to trip over itself as it careered around the tree after you. That clever brain was going to be needed, now you were a mammal. Bringing a helpless baby into the world was hard work. You had to look after it as well as yourself. You really needed two brains. Your brain did what it had to do and grew bigger, so now it could think for two. Your baby also had a big brain, of course, because it had inherited from you. So as it grew, it could think for you and its brothers and sisters. In no time, you had a whole family with linked up brains, busily thinking for each other. The grandparents were useful for showing the young pups around the place and pointing out the poisons, the tasty food, the friendly animals and the big hungries. And they could remember things from years ago, where to find water if there's a drought, where the best fruit trees grow. The young ones were useful for trying out new ways, experimenting, being a bit crazy and finding unexpected improvements. You all became linked by sound, special calls and barks which could connect you over long distances, by smell, special signal molecules which let everybody know if you were angry, afraid or happy, and by sight, the ability to look at someone and understand what they were feeling just by watching the way they behaved. Twenty heads were better than one. The ability to understand one another was helped by the evolution of mirror neurons. Inside the brain of us all is a kind of parallel brain which mirrors the actions of others. When you see someone kick a ball, the same ball-kicking nerves fire off in your brain as in theirs. When you see someone bump their head, you feel the pain as well. You can feel their joy and also mimic their actions. That empathy is caused by mirror neurons, which link all our brains together as if they are one super brain. So everyone looked out for everybody else. Instead of just your eyes and ears checking for danger, there were dozens peering in all directions. Your whole tribe was almost like a single animal with many eyes, noses and ears. And the clever result was that when one found food, they all got fed. Your family evolved super paws with fingers and thumbs which could work together to do complicated jobs like fishing out tasty grubs from underneath the barks of trees. They could find food where other animals could not. These particular mammals were going places. They were called apes, gorilla, orangutan and chimpanzee. You can look at pictures of chimps for a long time and not think that they're your distant cousins. But when you see them behave together, you realise how close we are to them. Their paws are so clever that we don't call them paws any longer. Like us, they have hands. When a senior chimp finds a nut, the young ones gather round hoping for a snack. What they get is a lesson. The nut has a shell and that has to be taken off. The elder chimp finds a stone of the right shape for the job. Often, if they find a really splendid one, they carry it with them around the forest. They wedge the nut into a crack in a rock, then hit it at just the right angle with the stone. 
The shell breaks and there's the snack. The young ones will eat the snack, then go off to experiment with other stones and nuts until they have the same skill as the elder. Everyone is at school all day. The chimpanzee is also fit, can swing through the trees like a gymnast, can throw things far, fast and accurately, and is incredibly strong for something so skinny. It's not surprising it's the animal that most looks like us animals. Chimpanzees are our nearest living relative in the animal world. 99% of our DNA is the same as theirs. Now you are on the brink of being a human, inside a chimp six or so million years ago, at a certain time, you and a few others decided to live on the ground rather than in trees. You started to walk on your hind legs. Your new name was Hominin. Which sounds pretty close to human, doesn't it? Not far to go now. Walking upright freed your hominin hands to do more complicated things than ripping tree branches. Those branches could be turned into things. Bendy ones from new trees could be bows. Stiff ones from ash could be arrows or spears. And thin willow withies could be woven into baskets. You could make cunning traps from rocks, branches and tree trunks. Ha ha! Now you didn't care how many sharp teeth Big Hungry had. You could catch him in a cage. Your busy hands were always active, bashing stones together till they broke, then playing with the sharp flakes that flew off. And your mind was busy thinking, what could be done with that sharpness? And so the Stone Age was formed. You and your tribe made lots of things out of stone, hammers, axes, spears, and flint arrowheads for your wooden arrows, fastened with string made from animal skin, cut carefully with your flint knife. Two million years passed, and you were tough, strong, nimble with your fingers, ingenious with your mind, and fast on your feet. You lived in Africa. You were ready to travel and explore. Your name was Human. Are you nearly here yet? Once you were a carbon atom. Then you lived in a molecule of DNA. Then the DNA lived in a single cell. Then the cell lived in an animal. Then the animal lived in a family. Now the family lives in a tribe. You are a human. Your tribe is superhuman. <laughs>